Okay, now we're going to look at the main data page. So I'd like to have a blank layout, so I'm just going to click New. And the first thing we're going to cover is the file name and keywords. The file name can really be anything you want. It's the focus of this particular document. It's the focus of this file. If you're entering contacts into FileMaster, by default, this will be the company name. And your contact name will go right here. But FileMaster doesn't pigeonhole you into that. If you have a contact with no company name, or if the company name is irrelevant to the file, you can put the contact name right up here. It does not matter how you enter this information because you're going to find it either way. So now let me show you what that looks like. So as I mentioned earlier, by default, the company name goes here in the file name and the contact information is here. So let's look at how I might do this if it was just a contact, maybe a buddy from church. I'll hit my plus button to enter a new line. Actually, we're going to do two, so I'll hit it twice. And let's put Bob Jones as the focus of our file. And on this one, we'll put Bob Hopkins into the contact name. Let's take a look. Bob Jones, we're opening up our little preview section here as we talked about in the last video. So we got Bob Jones as the focus of the file. That's the way I prefer it. I could care less if the contact name is filled out. I just like the way it looks right here. The alternative would be putting Bob Hopkins here, which leaves this blank. I don't really care for this, although it works fine either way. You can do it whichever way you like. And to me, that just looks cleaner, simpler. Now, suppose we start doing business with Bob Jones, and all of a sudden, it matters. That didn't take very long to change it up. So to recap, I typically put contact only. I typically put it as the file name. And if down the road, the company information becomes pertinent, I enter the data. And as you get to know FileMaster, you'll come up with some naming conventions that work great for you. And we have a video on just naming and keywords specifically for that. You can get more details on that. We show you some tips and tricks, some of the things that we do. But let's move on on this form. As you can see right here in the top left-hand side, it says file only. That's because it has a file location right here for a paper document. We covered that in the last video. So it could be at any one of our file cabinets. And you can add file cabinets just by clicking this right here. You can see our work file, reference file. These are all the file cabinets we currently have. If we want to add another file cabinet, we just type it right here. Test cabinet. Let's just call it that. We approve it. Get out of here. Now when we choose the drop down, you can see test cabinet right here. And there it is. Now, we don't actually want that. So let's go in and get rid of it. Just like that. Now, it's still in the file, which is good because you don't want to make changes on drop down menus and have it affect all your files. Any file that had test cabinet in there, it's still going to have it in there until you change it. And that's a good thing. Of course, moving files from one location to the other is super easy. And we have a video dedicated just for that called Moving Files. So we're just going to get rid of this altogether. And of course, that's the file location. This is the file number. So if it's at a file cabinet at my desk, maybe file number five. That's all we need to do. And forever and ever and ever, we know exactly where this file is. Now, that's file only. If there's a receipt attached to this file, you would choose file and receipt. You, we could make it receipt only, but that's for another video. File and receipt. Now we have the same thing. Receipt location. Almost always it's going to be called receipts. Um, unless you have multiple locations. Again, you click the plus sign and add as many as you like uh, and choose the file number. So that's that. Star rating, very simple. You just click the star that you'd like to rate this particular file. It's mostly created so that you can rate files. Like if you're doing research on products and you want to rate the products, it really, really comes in handy. Uh, you just simply click the star you want. If you want to change this to four stars, you click the fourth star. If you want to get rid of it, you click the whatever the maximum stars are. If you want to get rid of it, you just click that star and it disappears altogether. Keywords, one of the more important things throughout FileMaster, keywords for the file name. We also have keywords down here in the notes that we'll be covering in a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a video on naming conventions and keywords, but this is where the keywords would go. So if I'm creating a file for an insurance company, usually the name means nothing, like Glacier Insurance. 
a year from now, I might not remember that. But if it's my home insurance, I'm going to put home in here. If it's my car insurance, I'll put car and I'll probably put auto just in case when I'm looking for this file two years from now, maybe I don't think of car, maybe I think of auto. If it's boat, I'd put boat in there. And that way, when we do a search, so all I have to do is type in, let's say boat and Glacier Insurance pulls up and over here in the keyword, you can see boat and car. Moving on, you notice we have this locked area here and that's to lock a file or hide a file. If I choose to lock this file, I simply click the yes button. I'll have to enter in my secret passcode. We cover this in the security video right below this one. Now you see the icon here showing you that the file is locked. The location of the file is now hidden along with account numbers, usernames, and passwords. To unlock a file, again, you enter in your passcode and now the file location comes back and the account number, username, and password. Now we have another security issue built in for this area right here. So even if it's unlocked in order to enter or see an account number, again, you have to enter in your user code. And at that point, I can type in my account information. Same thing with the username. and the password. To view it, enter in my PIN, hit enter, and there's my username. If you're filling out a form online and you need your username and password, you don't really need to see it, you need to copy it. So if there's data in here, you have a little copy to the clipboard icon that pops up. See, it's not here because there's nothing in, but the minute you put information into this field, this pops up. So if I'm gonna copy and paste my user information, I'm simply gonna click that, enter in my code, and look, see how it's blue? It's highlighted. That's because it made a copy of the username. Now I go to my website and I can just simply paste it. We'll just paste it right up here to show you. Paste. Anywhere you choose. So you can lock a file here and all these things are hidden. We have triple security in FileMaster making sure your data stay safe. Down here in the detail section, most of it's pretty obvious. Contact name, job title, phone numbers, website, email. About the one thing that you might not be aware of is the description field. So if we have a phone number, it's very handy to be able to write some sort of description or whatever you like. Sometimes uh, if I'm looking for customer service and you got to dial uh, number two as you go through the prompts, I find that to be extremely helpful. Sometimes it'll be Mary's phone or whatever I need, just any kind of detail so I know what phone number I want to dial. Another thing, just like the usernames and passwords, if there's information in a field that you might want to copy and paste, you get a clipboard. Again, you just click it and it copies the information and you can paste it anywhere you want. We'll just paste it here for now just to show you. Very handy and saves lots of time. The address information here, obvious. And then the splash image. And a lot of people ask me why we have a splash image over here when we can put images and notes and documents down here. A splash image just tells you what is this file about. Again, the focus, kind of like the file name. This is just a little demo, so we put our logo in here. Let's go to a car dealer. And we've got the Mercedes logo here. Now, sometimes this is extremely helpful when you have files on products. Other times, it's fun. You're going to be in FileMaster all day, every day. You may as well make it look cool. So what happens is if I'm on the phone with somebody at a dealership or whatever, I'll just go ahead and find a website that's got the logo, right click and save it and drag it in just so the next time I come back, it's pretty. It's fun. I like it. I love having those images. So let me show you how. I'll go back to a few files. Let's do a blank file. There's a blank file. We'll open it up. We can insert images two different ways. We can click the plus button and navigate to the image and click insert. Or we can simply drag it in from your file browser. Works the same on Windows and Mac. Now to enlarge this, you click this right here. And you see a larger preview of it, depending on the size of the file. If you want to download it, you click this button here. Choose your location and click save and the file is immediately downloaded to whatever folder you choose. 
to delete an image. Just click the delete button and that's the splash image. You're going to find these extremely helpful. Another great feature on this page is the sharing option right up here. We just click share and we're just now rolling this out. So we're in beta mode right now and we'll be fixing this up as we go. But right now, fully functional. You can share a file by role. In other words, with an entire floor of your office or with all your admins or sales guys or whatever you like, or you can share a file with individual users just by clicking the plus button. I'm going to share this file with, uh, let's say, Jeff Smith. I click this. Jeff is pulled up here into the list and I can choose whether he gets to view it, view and edit, view, edit and delete. I can give him whatever security I like. That's for the main part of the file. And then the notes and documents, same thing. View, edit, view, create, delete, whatever I choose. And at any time, I can remove him from having access to that file. Great feature for the office. And finally, we have the portal where we have the notes, conversations, and tasks. We're going to go into detail on those in the next video.